Today, I'm going to share with you how to improve your eyesight naturally without these things right here. Glasses. I cannot stand these glasses. And they call them corrective lenses, but do they really correct anything? No. The more you wear them, the more that you need a stronger prescription. In fact, when I wear these, especially for long periods of time, oh my gosh, my eyes are killing me. Did you realize that by the age of 45, most people need glasses? What is going on? I think this video will be a game changer for you if you have this very specific problem that I want to share with you. It's something that the eye doctors rarely test for, unfortunately, in the routine eye test. I did a little deep dive and I found there's this other thing called contrast sensitivity loss. The loss of being able to differentiate different shades of gray. Things will look blurry, especially if there's not enough light. This is definitely a breakdown with the retina and it could be also the lens, but it's a different problem. You see, when you go to an eye doctor, they'll put a chart up with the letters and you have black letters on a white background. That is actually high contrast. They're evaluating different problems with the eye that are not necessarily related to this contrast sensitivity loss. That's a completely different test and it's not a routine thing that they test for. If someone has this loss of contrast sensitivity, adding more light can greatly help the person see. That doesn't actually fix the problem it helps you compensate for the problem. There's certain patents, there's certain research done that if a person starts to increase certain antioxidants in the eye, that can improve this condition. Hmm. Why would an antioxidant improve your vision? You normally have several antioxidants in the retina area that protect the eye against blue light. If you look at the spectrum of light, out of all the different individual waveforms, blue light is the highest energy. It can create the most damage. This is probably why we have these antioxidants in the eye to protect our eyes from blue light. And the category of antioxidants is called carotenoids. These antioxidants not just protect you against blue light, they protect you against all sorts of problems in the eye. Being a diabetic or a pollution or any chemicals in the body that go to the eye, those antioxidants can actually protect the eye. As we age, our carotenoids go down. Our protection in the eye goes down as well. When you're 20 years old, you have this super concentrated density of antioxidants in the back of the eye, in the retina. And then you get older, 45, 50, 59, like myself, it's, it's significantly lower. Then the efficiency of absorbing light goes down. By age 65, you need twice as much light to be able to see like you did when you're 20 years old because you no longer have the efficiency of absorbing light like you used to. This is why adding more light will help you, but it doesn't solve the problem. It only gives you a temporary solution. And so one solution is definitely to get an extra light. Make sure you get a bulb that is a full spectrum light and it like, and you wanna actually shine it on what you're reading and studying and you will be able to see better. But we need to do something else to increase the efficiency of your retina. Let's get into what you need to do to correct that. Our ancestors did not spend all day long inside in a dim room looking at a cell phone, flipping through TikTok videos. Our eyes were not designed to do that. Our eyes were designed to interact with the sun's light. Of course, in 1980, the introduction of sun phobia, like fearing the sun, was introduced with all sorts of sunscreen and all sorts of sunglasses, which by the way, make you look really cool, but they definitely stop that light from going into the eye. A regular dose of natural sunlight on the eyes is a very therapeutic thing. Why? Well, one reason is you get UV light into the eye. Infrared, and infrared is very healing to the eyes. Infrared also builds up melatonin in the eyes, which is one of the most powerful antioxidants in your cells. This entire sun phobia, I think was a huge mistake. UV radiation to the eyes is not nearly a problem if you have the protection, the carotenoids. You wanna get more light into your desk or wherever you're studying. You need to start eating foods high in lutein and zeaxanthin. These are two carotenoids that you can find in egg yolks. But the problem with egg yolks is if you consume egg yolks from a commercial egg, not a pasteurized egg, you're gonna get three times less carotenoids with commercial eggs. There are also a lot of supplements out there that you can get that have lutein and zeaxanthin. I'm going to recommend that you find one that has at least 10 milligrams of lutein and two milligrams of zeaxanthin. Also, if you can find one that has olive oil in it or 
MCT oil or some fat, that can help the absorption because carotenoids are fat soluble. Another solution is just to take this supplement when you're eating food because they're going to get absorbed a lot better. In this one paper, a significant improvement in decreasing macular degeneration, improving the loss of contrast sensitivity by taking these two carotenoids for 12 weeks. Also highly recommend you at the same time stop consuming seed oils. I'm talking about in the salad dressing and the mayonnaise, soy oil, the canola oil, the cottonseed oil, the sunflower oil. These are very high in omega-6 and they can go into our membranes in the eye and they can interfere with the retina. It's a great paper on this, which was given to me by Dr. Chris Kenobi, who's an ophthalmologist who specializes in the eye. That paper was really about uh, getting rid of the seed oils and replace it with an ancestral diet, uh, something that's more a natural diet that doesn't have all the refined foods. Another important food to consume would be fatty fish, salmon, because the omega-3 are really good for the eye, also to reduce inflammation of the eye as well. If you think about it, the retina is just an extension of the brain. And the retina needs DHA. That's a, an omega-3 fatty acid. And you can get that in fish oil or cod liver oil. Let's come back to the topic of vitamin D. Is that important for the eye? Wow, it really is. I looked at the research in vitamin D. Every uh, part of the eye is improved with vitamin D. A lot of conditions are improved too, like glaucoma. There's research by another ophthalmologist from Germany who gets fantastic results with high doses of vitamin D or glaucoma, which is an increased pressure in the eye. And there's a lot of research on taking uh, vitamin D for macular degeneration, using vitamin D to help reduce uh, the complications of retinopathy, which is eye damage from diabetes. I recommend you take at least 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day. Of course, vitamin A, which is actually in egg yolks, is very important in the eye as well. If you lose vitamin A, it's hard to see at night. In summary, you need to get outside more. If you're in front of your desk and the computer, cell phone for a long period of time, you need to get outside and get sunlight. In the meantime, you can get a, another full spectrum light that shines more light so you can actually wear these less. That'll give you time to build up your carotenoids in the eye because as you age, you have less carotenoids and now the efficiency of absorbing light is going to be less. Lutein, zeaxanthin are the two that you need to build up over a period of three months. Of course, eat foods high in that as well. Egg yolks, cod liver oil, vitamin D, throw some zinc in there. That can help as well. The reason why most people need glasses at age 45 is because our eyes were designed to be outside, not in front of a computer. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. 
Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.